I apologize for interrupting the work you were doing. <laughs> I wanted you to know that the alarm system has been tested and everything is fine. <laughs> In this week's all new edition of The Ready Room, I visit with Anthony Rapp, who plays Paul Stamets, and we get a behind the scenes look at season five's epic stunts. Welcome aboard. Hey nerds, I'm Will Wheaton, and this is The Ready Room, your official behind the scenes hub for the Star Trek universe. How about this week's episode of Star Trek Discovery? Wasn't that fun? Who doesn't love watching a starship captain fight a past version of themselves and then show themselves the compassion and empathy their past self really needed? I loved that. A little later, we have a special look at how that fight scene and more of this episode's stunts came to be. Now it might go without saying, but there will be spoilers aplenty. So I am calling for a black alert. If you haven't seen this week's episode of Star Trek Discovery Face the Strange, go stream it on Paramount Plus right now. Go, go, we'll wait for you. I'm waiting right now. Y'all set? Good, welcome back, hope you enjoyed it. This week I get to chat with Anthony Rapp, who plays mushroom surfer Paul Stamets. We'll talk about time travel shenanigans and more. Control room, hit it. Anthony Rapp, hello. Welcome to the Ready Room. Thank you. So a lot has happened since we last sat down and <laughs> yes. visited together. Uh, before Indeed. we talk about Discovery, let's talk about you being a new dad real quick. How are you finding parenthood? I'm finding it to be an incredible adventure. Um, I had never been around newborns very much before our first son, Rye, was born. So that was a little scarier, more mysterious. Now I feel like I got a lot more like confidence in sort of handling a newborn creature. Sure. Um, and not just saying this because I'm on the show, but playing Stamets and getting to be a part of his journey of fatherhood really did help me prepare in many ways to really start to think about on a deeper level what it might mean. Let's talk about this season, things changing and reaching new challenges. Here's kind of a big one for Paul. He's literally part of the mycelial network. <laughs> He's like, mm -hmm. that is such an enormous part of his life and spore drives are now mm -hmm. going away. This has got to cause such an existential identity crisis. Well, I I'm, was grateful that the writers embraced that question as wholeheartedly as they did. You have no idea how much pressure I'm under. I thought that was your thing. Brilliant scientist that everything's hanging on. Yeah, well, things change. And not every problem is something you can figure out on your own. They absolutely embraced the opportunity where he would go, you know what, I'm gonna completely pivot. I'm gonna walk away from all of this and, and take an entirely new direction. But then that became an opportunity to discover a whole new well of meaning. So I think you can't have the well of meaning without the sort of peering into the abyss moment. He is this week one of just a handful of folks who are jumping through time and are aware of it. I felt like there was just so much metaphor in that, not just for Paul, but for I think for a lot of people in the audience. Well, it, it, it was, to me, it was like a wonderful callback to that great episode in season one where I was similarly in and out of time. Yeah. So it was like, okay, I've had this experience before. I kind of know how to do this. It doesn't make it easy but it makes it possible. Mm -hmm. And then of course, yes, working with Tignataro is always a joyful thing. And then to get to play this weird dance with her, which yeah. she's so good at being kind of like displaced and kind of lost. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was just, it was, it's always fun to spar. And this was a new little texture to the sparring. Are you stuck in a time loop right now, Stamets? What? No. What? <laughs> Just messing with you. The way that she played that with you, I genuinely couldn't tell if like Reno knows exactly what's going on and is just messing with him because she knows she's not allowed to, temporal prime directive and all that, or if she's just doing a bit. And either one of those choices for Reno seems like really grounded in the reality of her character and the relationship. It was delightful to watch. Thank you, and I dare you to ask Tig and see what she says, because she may or may not tell you. In this time travel story, there is just an incredible amount of action, and we put together a little package of some of the stunts 
that mm. uh, that have happened this season that we wanted to show to our friends at home, and I'd love for you to see it as well. Control room, let's take a look. No, 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 Burnham, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Yeah, I really do. Oh my goodness, that episode. Well, it just felt so deeply culminating for me. One of the things about uh, doing this time travel episode is the opportunity to see our characters as they are now versus as they were then. You have one Burnham that's sort of broken and on some level a convict, and um, another Burnham who is the same person but is a captain of a starship. You must think I'm an idiot. If you expect me to believe that a mutineer could ever end up with Captain's pips? You know, you don't ever really get a chance to see that. You don't get a chance to come face to face with who you used to be and see like, wow, I am a completely different person. That emotion and that juxtaposition play out in a fight. So usually when you do a fight, you learn your side of the fight. But now she's got to learn her side of the fight and her other side of the fight. It was quite a thing to shoot. There were so many uh, techniques that had to be employed to make it happen. We had to have the fight style of season one be more sort of raw and emotional. Season five, Burnham is just much more refined, a lot more experience in her Seuss Manau sort of Vulcan martial arts. The approach that I take to action sequences, you want to be there for the rehearsals, you want to watch all the angles and beats that are happening, and you want to think about that, how it pertains to light, where they're going to be at certain moments, where your camera wants to be at certain moments. You get the stunt doubles to do it first, and, and then you see the kind of the biggest version of it, and then you start trading out the stunt people for real actors. Being Burnham's stunt double is very rewarding, but making an action sequence really work is uh, being able to deliver the intent of the scene and really being able to show that in your movements. I had a really good time. It was a challenge, but I'm surrounded by incredible people. I think what I was most proud of is that it really did look like she was fighting herself and you really could see the difference between season one and season five. It's a master class in getting to watch an actor like her do what she does. One of the things you and I have in common, in addition to being members of Star Trek and being Dungeons and Dragons aficionados, we're science nerds. Yeah. We both really love science, and it's always fun, like, working on Star Trek, those moments where fake science grows out of the imagination from real science. Um, there's been a spore breach. Evacuate now, or, or mushrooms will grow in your lungs. Getting to meet and talk to the real Paul Stamets, and yeah. getting acquainted with some of the work that he's done. Yeah and how the work that he's done and the, and the science that he's um, been a part of exploring what mushrooms and mycelia do and how they behave in the world and how that was then translated into the mycelial network. For everyone in the audience who is just hearing about mycelial networks in reality uh, as opposed to fiction for the first time, I cannot tell you how rewarding it is to go down that rabbit hole and find out how those networks talk to each other. It's absolutely fascinating to me. Yes. Anthony, we had this idea that maybe we could play a fun mushroom game with you based on your science knowledge. We were gonna have the control room show you some mushrooms who I am calling the fun guys. Uh-huh. So we're gonna show you some pictures of these various fungi mm -hmm. with a hint mm -hmm. and see how many you can name. Bonus points if you can hit their scientific names that I can't pronounce. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Here we go. Okay, I'm excited. Anthony Rapp. Okay. Question number one. This is mushroom. Lion's mane? Oh, this mushroom is lion's mane. You didn't even need the clue. Question number two. A hint for this mushroom. People tend to make crass jokes about my name. Crass jokes? Yes, you have 10 seconds starting now. That's not a button mushroom. It's not, but I love that. I love that your head went there. Five seconds. It's not a crem It's not a cremini. It's not. It is a shiitake. That's a shiitake? That's a shiitake. Wow, I think, uh, I think of their hoods as being sort of, I don't know, more wide. You get okay. bonus points for correctly referring to the cap of the mushroom as a hood. Here's question number three. My street name sounds like something the Brothers Grimm would have come up with or a cursed D&D item. 10 seconds starts now. A cursed D&D item? Yep. Like the 
the terrible. Oh! Oh! I feel like that alarm sound did not come from us. I feel like that's coming out of your building. I apologize for interrupting the work you were doing. <laughs> I wanted you to know that the alarm system has been tested and everything is fine. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're back. The correct answer is bleeding fairy helmet. Who ever heard of a bleeding fairy? I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. I trust you. I've never heard of a bleeding fairy helmet either. But look, I'm just a host. Here is hint number four. Having a great leader on set like Sinequa really tends to boost this. That's a pretty good hint, but it's a pun, which makes it a little, oh, but it's a morel. It um, is a morel. And I will tell you something else I learned about morels. I can give you a fun Please fact. Please do, thank you. If you're cooking morels, make sure you ventilate well because they can off-gas some toxic fumes. Thank you so much for that uh, advice. That's important. Yes. You never want to turn your kitchen into a chemical weapons factory like I did when I was making habanero hot sauce. That was a mistake. How did, okay, be, please be careful. Question number five. I have no colloquial name, but I do have some regional names in Japan. 10 seconds. So it's a Japanese name? Um, Glowing gl green guy? Time is up. It is actually called the nightlight mushroom or the green Ooh. pepe. Control room, can you give me a final score? I got exactly two correct. 40%, which uh, as it turns out for this game is good enough for second place. All right. <laughs> Let's give the winner a prize. The prize for the winner is this clip from next week's episode I like to call Burnham and Book's Wild Ride. How are we doing, Book? It'll be close. Hang on! Captain, are you okay? Did you make it in safely? We're okay, we made it. I got some interference, though. Captain, Lieutenant Christopher. Trying to get her back, sir. Cycling through all frequencies. Commander Stamets, to the science lab. I need you to boost comms. Bring whoever you need. On my way. Eyes up, everyone. Captain's counting on us. Yellow alert. Visibility shit in here. It's exotic matter of some kind. It's wreaking havoc on our sensors. And our hollow pads. Blind, deaf, and blind. <laughs> Good times. Book, watch out. Hang on. Debris is not a good sign. That's monologue ship. Half of it, anyway. The aperture must have caught the stern when they were passing through. You think they made it? Maybe. If they made it into that. It's really cool. Oh, man, it's getting so intense. Also beautiful. So like, gorgeous. Just to see the incredible artistry of our visual effects folks to be able to do the level of work that they do is really, it's really awe-inspiring. Anthony, this is the end of our time together today and I wondered if there was anything you wanted to say. Well, man, I mean, uh, I just wanna express my gratitude to all the people who've embraced Stamets over these years. Um, he's been a huge gift to me personally especially his journey of fatherhood, I feel like has helped prepare me for my journey of fatherhood in many ways. Um, and to be able to tell stories that touch people's hearts. And I know that this is not the end, as you said, this is really in many ways the, the first chapter of, of my journey in this legacy universe. And I'm very, very grateful that that's the case and that I will continue to get to be a part of this for as long as I'm alive. Thank you. It is an honor to share a universe with you. Next week, Callum Keith Rennie, who plays the Discovery's new first officer, Rainer, will be here to talk all about season five, episode five, Mirrors. And I'm a little intimidated. <laughs> Until then, I'm Will Wheaton. Live long and prosper.